IBIS is an open source Python data frame library. It provides a Pythonic interface that supports relational operations translated to SQL and then executed on the underlying database. It supports a variety of data sources, including ClickHouse. And so in this video, I want to show you how to query ClickHouse using IBIS. We're going to launch our IPython REPL, and then we're going to install the IBIS framework with the ClickHouse dependency and some examples that they have as well. And then once we've done that, let's import IBIS, and then we're going to import a special function, which is the underscore, which we'll use in a little bit. Once we've done that, we're going to connect to a ClickHouse server that I've got running on my machine. Now we're going to create a table. We'll call it flights, and we're going to use one of the inbuilt IBIS data sets. You can see it comes back with the schemas. You can see we've got the year, the month, the day, the departure time, delays, arrival time, flight, carrier, and so on. We can also do con.tables, and it will show us the list of tables that we've got, which in this case is just the one. And we can also, with the help of the rich console, we can connect to our table. So we can say con.table flights, and then we can have a look at the schema of the table. And you can see we've got very similar to what we saw before. Interestingly here, notice that the departure delay and arrival delay are both strings, whereas they are probably numeric. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the mutate function to cast those values. So we'll do departure delay and we'll cast that to an int, filling in any empty values with zero. And then we'll do the same for arrival delay. Now that doesn't change the underlying data in ClickHouse. This is purely in IBIS. We're going to have a look at the first record in the flights data set. We'll convert it to pandas and then transpose it because otherwise there's too many columns to see what's going on. And you can see it comes back with a flight going out of Newark in 2013. We can also apply functions to the flights table. So for example, we could say I want to group by the flights destination column. I want to count the number of flights and then I want to order by the number of flights descending. So that's what the ibis.desc function is doing and I'll get five records and I'm going to preview it. And you can see it comes back here with the results. Now you can also set IBIS options interactive to true, and then it will preview any IBIS tables without needing to use that preview function. So if we now get back our previous query, delete the preview, you can see it then shows the results there. We can also do the same thing using the aggregate function instead. So this time we'll name it. So we'll call it flight count and we'll do again flights.count. And then we can do order by ibis.desc and then we're going to use the special underscore function to call flight count and the reason we do that is because it doesn't actually exist on that flights table so if we try to call flights.flight count it will throw an exception and you can see it comes up with the same result we can use the underscore wherever we want to name a column so let's go back to our previous query and we'll change flights.count to be underscore.count and then we'll do flights.dest to be underscore.dest and again if we run that you get the same result Another way, if you're grouping by just a single column, is you can use the top K function, and that will basically do a count based on that column and give you the result. And so you can see we get the same, same result as we've been doing on the previous queries. If we want to see the underlying SQL that's being executed, we can use the ibis.2 SQL function. And so if we do that on the top K, you can see it comes back with this. It's probably a slightly too complicated query, but it, it does the job. We can also compose IBIS expressions. So let's say we want to create a routes by carrier, which is grouping the flights by the destination, the origin and the carrier, and then counting the number grouped by those columns. We can then store that as a variable and we'll have a look at it. So you can see it comes back with those three columns and then the count. We could then say, actually, I'm going to filter that variable to only find the carriers that are American Airlines or Delta Airlines. I'll then group it actually by two other columns, so origin and destination. And then we'll sum up the flight counts and we'll order by the flight counts descending. And then you see we get that just for those carriers, we get the number of flights from a particular origin to a particular destination. We could also go even further. So let's say we're really interested in exploring flights around New York. So we capture JFK into one variable, LaGuardia into another and Newark into another one. We could then join them all together and compute the average departure delay. So it's 12 12 minutes, or we could then go and update it and say, actually, I want to group that by the origin. And then it will show us the average departure delay for each of the flights leaving uh, New York. We could also do one final thing. So we can kind of take that previous query and we could work out the minimum delay origin using the arg min function, the minimum delay itself, the maximum delay origin, again, using arg max this time, and then the maximum delay. And you can see it comes back. So LaGuardia had the minimum delay and Newark had the maximum delay. 
We can also connect this to a ClickHouse database running anywhere. So we've got a ClickHouse database running at play.clickhouse.com that has a bunch of data sets. So let's have a look what data sets we've got on there. So you can see there are a whole load of tables. Uh, I quite like the UK price paid data set, which has the transactions done to purchase houses in the UK. So let's create a variable pointing at that table and we'll look at the schema so you can see it comes back the price the date and the postcodes are probably the most interesting bits for us and let's now write a query that groups by the two postcode parts we'll get the maximum price and then we'll compute the average price and then we'll order by the highest maximum price and you can see these are the most expensive houses sold in the UK so that's one Python library for querying ClickHouse. Another one that you might find interesting is CHDB, which gives you the power of ClickHouse embedded in Python.